both of you. So the president's on Fox and Friends tomorrow. Uh, I want the big interview, and congratulations to both of you. And I want to be in the friend zone, Tucker. So Any, Anytime. All right, and welcome to Hannity. All right, buckle up. Tonight, the deep state is crumbling right before our eyes. Just moments ago, our own Catherine Herridge broke major news. Now, sources claiming that fired FBI Director James Comey may have now, in fact, leaked his private memos detailing meetings with President Trump to multiple individuals. This is damning new revelation that could land James Comey in serious legal jeopardy. Now, even CNN's chief legal analyst, a liberal, is saying that the former career bureaucrat could be in major legal trouble tonight. Now, of course, this did not stop Comey from having a huge, big, boozy book party with some of his friends in the media. I guess my invitation got lost in the mail. Also tonight, Judicial Watch, for the first time, they have released 281 pages, just brand new, newly uncovered emails from Hillary Clinton's private server. And yes, it includes some classified information, totally redacted. Why haven't we gotten these sooner? And we will reveal the contents of those emails in just moments. Now get ready, it's gonna make your blood boil. Also, the president is getting some very public, enthusiastic praise from one of America's most iconic rappers, Kanye West. Now we're gonna bring you the latest from his glowing endorsement of the president. This story will blow you away, it's amazing. And CNN's Trump-hating fake news reporter and liberal activist Jim Acosta has completely gone off the rails. We've got the tape. And and we are currently awaiting this hour, could happen any minute, from the Justice Department, new missing text messages from FBI lovebirds, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. We'll bring them to you as soon as we get them. But first, time for tonight's breaking news opening monologue. All right, tonight we start with explosive news from our own Catherine Herridge. The memos that Jim Comey leaked to the media that ultimately became the catalyst, his desire for the appointment of special counsel Robert Mueller, they were more widely shared than he previously disclosed. Now, last year, Comey told Congress that he leaked this memo to his friend, Professor Daniel Richmond of Columbia University. Now, tonight, sources are revealing that Comey's current lawyer, longtime friend, Patrick Fitzgerald, you may remember the Scooter Libby case, was also given this potentially classified information in these documents, and sources are also claiming that Comey may have leaked the memos to yet another unnamed individual. Now, just moments ago, here is how James Comey tried to explain all of these leaks that he never told us about before. I sent one memo, unclassified then, still unclassified, and it's recounted in my book, to my friend Dan Richmond and asked him to get the substance of it, but not the memo, out to the media. Separately, I wrote a bunch of memos about my interactions with President Trump, and I was what was called an original classification authority at the FBI, meaning I had the training and the authority to make decisions about what should be classified, what shouldn't. Some of those memos I decided should be classified. Four others, I wrote them and was highly confident they should not be classified. Those four, I kept a copy of the FBI and a copy of my personal safe at home. After I was fired, I put together a legal team of three people, one of whom was Professor Dan Richmond at Columbia University. After I had asked him to give this information to the media, I separately gave my legal team four memos, which were unclassified. The bottom line is, I see no credible claim by any serious person that that violated the law. Yeah, that's like Obama saying no serious person could think Russia could ever have any tampering in our elections. Now, contrary to what Comey just said, in just moments, we will have multiple credible individuals, including former U.S. Attorney Joe DeGeneva, shine some light on Comey's serious misdeeds. Now, CNN went on to press Comey on his potentially illegal leaking. Amazing. Watch this. You did leak memos. I mean, is it okay for somebody at the FBI to leak something, an internal document, even if it's not classified? Isn't that leaking? Well, there's a whole lot wrong with your question, Anderson. First, I didn't leak memos. I asked a friend to communicate the substance of one unclassified well, that, I mean, memo. Whether you, Can you I know, finish for a second? Sure, okay. One unclassified memo to the media, and I was really important. I was a private citizen. I was not an FBI employee at that right, time. But it was an internal document. It was a document you had written while you were FBI director. That, that is a leak. I mean, if you tell somebody, don't give them the document, but tell them what's in the document, that's still a leak, no? Well, not to get tangled up in it, I think of a leak as an unauthorized disclosure of classified information. Really? That's I it? Has Anderson been secretly watching this show? Now remember, in June of last year, James Comey made no mention of this during his testimony before Congress. Take a look. Did you show copies of your memos 
to anyone outside of the Department of Justice? Yes. And to whom did you show copies? I asked, um, President tweeted on Friday after I got fired that I better hope there's not tapes. I woke up in the middle of the night on Monday night, because it didn't dawn on me originally, that there might be corroboration for our conversation. There might be a tape. And my judgment was I needed to get that out into the public square. And so I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. And so I asked a close friend of mine to do it. And was that Mr. Wittes? No, uh, no. W who was that? A good friend of mine who's a professor at Columbia Law School. Now remember, he was under oath. That means even more jeopardy for Jim Comey tonight. And was James Comey withholding information from Congress? Did he lie by omission? Now this is damning the revelations that are surrounding whether or not the fired FBI director acted in an unethical and potentially illegal way after he was fired. And tonight we can confirm that the office for the inspector general is investigating Jim Comey, the disgraced former FBI director. For months on this program, we have been predicting that Jim Comey could well, in fact, be facing serious legal consequences for these actions. And earlier this week, the president weighed in. Remember, he wrote, James Comey illegally leaked classified documents to the press in order to generate a special counsel. Therefore, the special counsel was established based on an illegal act. Really? Does everybody know what that means? Now, even CNN's top liberal legal analyst, a total lib, is weighing in. And even he acknowledges this is not looking good for Jim Comey. What is the president uh, implying there? Well, well, what he's saying is that when uh, James Comey took those memos that recounted his conversations with the president and gave them to Professor Dan Richmond at Columbia University, that was an illegal leak, especially since he considered, he, he knew that Richmond was going to give that to the press. But, but are our notes about a conversation with the president taken by uh, then a private citizen, are, are those classified? They may or may not be. And in fact, when the, when the uh, uh, administration or Congress released those, so, some versions of those memos, some of the portions were blacked out. I think James Comey actually is in a pretty vulnerable position here. Just because something is not marked classified doesn't mean that after the fact it couldn't be retroactively designated classified. I think Comey may, may really have a problem there. Yeah, he may have a problem. Now, this potential legal jeopardy is not stopping Comey from living it up. Now, cashing in on his newfound fame and fortune, the Trump-hating former FBI director threw himself a big party at what is called the Museum in Washington, D.C., an appropriate venue given that many of Comey's honored guests hailed from the mainstream media. So let's hope Jim Comey made a good impression. After all, we do know this book tour and this media blitz is just one big tryout for Comey's future career, if he wants one, as a pundit on conspiracy. Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, or fake news CNN. Now, one more breaking story to bring you. Fox News has learned that former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani has now taken over discussions with the special counsel, Robert Mueller, about a possible interview with the president. Now, Rudy Giuliani just put out a statement. It reads in part, the president has produced 1.2 million documents that is historically unprecedented. We believe it presents overwhelming proof that the president did not collude with regard to to the 2016 election. Remember, that's where it was supposed to start. And according to sources, the president is open to speaking with Robert Mueller and wrapping up the investigation. We're going to analyze these new developments later in the show. My advice, until Andrew Weissman and other anti-Trump agenda-driven investigators are fired, no way Donald Trump should do that interview. Now, remember, Weissman, described by the New York Times as Mueller's pit bull, he withheld exculpatory evidence multiple times, had several high-profile convictions, overturned on appeal, but not before ruining the lives of tens of thousands of people, and especially at Anderson Accounting. All right, now we turn to another major breaking story. Ju Judicial Watch tonight has released hundreds of pages, brand new, for the first time, unearthed emails from Hillary Clinton's illicit email server. Why did it take this long? How is it possible Hillary Clinton was not charged with mishandling classified information because some of the new emails show these emails were classified? Now, we know Clinton's server was likely hacked by multiple foreign governments, and now multiple uncovered emails tonight contain information so sensitive and classified they were 
totally redacted, including this email exchange between Prime Minister Tony Blair, Clinton, and other State Department officials entitled Mideast Peace. Now, next, there was another completely redacted email. In this document, even the recipients were removed. The title was, of the email was, quote, plan. And other uncovered emails also revealed some pretty damning evidence that the Clinton State Department was, in fact, actively colluding with the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton's constant obsessive money-making schemes. In one particularly disturbing email, a Clinton campaign official retrieved a request for a 20, in 2010 asking for advice how to get through to Bill Clinton about big money offer to speak abroad. Was it Russia? Where was it? Now, the email was promptly forwarded to a State Department employee and even Uma Abedin herself. Now, of course, this was during Hillary Clinton's time when she was the Secretary of State. Now, remember the case of Christian Saucier. Remember that Navy sailor, sailor recently pardoned by President Trump, but only after he was forced to spend time in jail, sentenced to a year in jail for mishandling six pictures he was proud of because he worked inside a U.S. submarine? Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is mishandling top secret emails from world leaders, nothing. And by the way, this new release only accounts for a couple of hundred emails. Where's the 33,000 that she deleted and acid washed and had devices beaten up with hammers? Now, the Clintons really want us to believe foreign entities didn't use the foundation to influence a sitting secretary of state, millions of dollars. And we're going to get back to these almost unbelievable discoveries. Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch is here. But first, it is a new political landscape in America. Famed rapper, fashion designer Kanye West has now issued a very glowing endorsement of President Trump. He took to Twitter, telling his millions of Twitter followers, quote, you don't have to agree with Trump, but the mob can't make me not love him. Now, we both, we are both dragon energy. He is my brother. I love everyone. I don't agree with everyone, any, everything anyone does. Well, that's what makes us individuals. And we have the right to independent thought. And Kanye West even posted a picture of himself wearing a Make America Great Again hat, driving liberals on social media totally insane tonight. And get this, Kanye is even slamming former President Obama for his utter failure in the former president's own hometown of Chicago, writing, quote, Obama was in office for eight years and nothing in Chicago changed. Now, Kanye West is absolutely right. We talked about this a lot. Under the Obama administration, nearly 4,000 people were murdered on the streets of Chicago, his hometown. Obama barely mentioned it, did nothing. This was American lives, American treasure lost, tragedy, travesty. Now, of course, this all started after Kanye West publicly stood up for a black conservative, a woman that we had on the program this week, Candace Owens, after many on the left slammed her remarks at UCLA. Take a look at this. What is happening right now in the black community, you're going to hear it in this room first, there is a, an ideological civil war happening, black people that are focused on their past and shouting about slavery, and black people that are focused on their futures. Victim mentality is not cool. I don't know why people like being oppressed. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I love oppression. We're oppressed. 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow, which by the way, none of you guys lived through. Your grandparents didn't. It's embarrassing that you utilize, you utilize their history. You utilize their history, and you come in here with more emotion than they ever had when they were living through it. More emotion than than they ever had when they were living through it. It's embarrassing. You're not living through anything right now. You're overly privileged American. Amazing moment. Star is born. And while Kanye West takes a stand for freedom of thought and freedom of expression, we should all support this. Over at CNN, you have your professional Trump hater, so-called journalist Jim Acosta. Well, he's doing the exact opposite and going completely off the rails, claiming that Americans could be inspired by Trump's rhetoric, calling out liberal media bias and actually commit acts of violence against the president, uh, against the press. Does he not remember Madonna's remarks about desiring and dreaming of blowing up the White House or the severed head or any of the other instances in the anthrax scare? Watch this. The problem is, is that uh, people around the country don't know it's an act. They're not in on the act. And they take what he says very seriously. And they take attacks from Sean Spicer and Sarah Sanders and, and what they do to us on a daily basis very seriously. They don't have all their faculties in, in some cases. Their, their, their elevator might not hit all floors. My concern is, is that, there's a, that a journalist is going to be hurt one of these days. Somebody's going to get hurt. And uh, at that point, 
you know, the White House, the President of the United States, they're going to have to take a hard look in the mirror and ask themselves whether or not they played a role in this. How many threats against the president? How many? Th who talks about blowing up the White House, putting up severed heads as a joke? Now, we have known for some time that Jim Acosta lives in a paranoid anti-Trump state of delusion that some call it Trump derangement syndrome. But Jim Acosta and his friends and the fake news media, they need to wake up. President Trump is not the source of all of your problems. And to complain that his honest discussion about the state of the media in this country is going to incite violence, that is a step too far and patently, frankly, absurd. All right, joining us now, former U.S. Attorney Joe DeGeneva, Full disclosure, he has done legal work for me in the past. And full disclosure, I got to tell it all, he actually came to my radio Christmas party. And I think this is a Trump tie that I have on tonight. Um, welcome to the program, sir. Nice to be with you again. <laughs> and it's good to have you. Let, let's talk about Jim Comey. The dirty Let's cop. talk about... He's, is he in legal uh, he's, jeopardy? He's, he's in deep trouble. The dirty cop is in deep trouble, not only because he was engaged in a conspiracy to illegally exonerate Hillary Clinton and then frame Donald Trump and Trump associates with uh, crimes. He, he has disclosed illegally classified information to people who were unauthorized to receive it. Mr. Richmond, Patrick Fitzgerald. Uh, P Patrick Fitzgerald receiving classified information is particularly rich given his r role in the framing of Scooter Libby for a non-existent crime. So I think Mr. Comey's troubles uh, in his 15 pages of memorandums, which were a rather lengthy suicide note, is committing suicide publicly every day. We, uh, and you know what? We on this show warned him. All right. I have a problem. I, I know New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani well. He's been a frequent guest on this program. I, I was here in New York when he transformed and saved this city. He is saying that he, uh, there's reports he's reopened negotiations about a possible discussion between mm -hmm. Mueller and Trump. As long as Andrew Weissman, with his background and, these, and all these Democratic donors, I just don't trust Mueller and his team. Am I well, wrong? I don't I, I don't know. I don't think you are wrong. I think the search of uh, Michael Cohen's office in New York was an act of terror committed legally uh, by people in the Justice Department. And Mueller knew it was going to happen. Rosenstein authorized it. Uh, it was an outrageous act against the attorney client privilege. It never should have been done. It was done to intimidate the president and others. Uh, it was done in bad faith. And because it was done in bad faith by Mueller and others, I don't believe under any circumstance can you trust Mueller and the people around him do, to do a good faith interview. I would reject the interview out of hand. Do you, do you think a lot of all these criminal referrals from Congress, from the inspector general, now James Comey, how many people do you think are in legal jeopardy in all this? Well, I think uh, actually quite a few. I think uh, Brennan. Clapper, Rice, Rhodes, who were all involved in the illegal unmasking and the illegal leaking of the unmasked names. Uh, Miss Powers from the United Nations. I think Mr. Comey, clearly McCabe is in deep trouble. Uh, I think that Page and Strzok are cooperating, so they're probably not in legal trouble. Uh, I think a lot of people at the highest levels of the Justice Department under Obama are in very serious legal trouble. Joe DeGeneva, thank you. Thank you for coming to my Christmas party. We really, it's great to see you. All right. Here with more reaction is the House Intel Committee Chairman, California Congressman Devin Nunes, Freedom Caucus Chairman, North Carolina Congressman Mark Meadows. Neither were invited to my Christmas party. Um, uh, and I apologize for that now in retrospect. Uh, I've been hearing all night a lot and all day yesterday that there's a possibility that that struck page memos were actually handed over to the State Department uh, last week, and, and we haven't had them revealed. Congressman Meadows, have you heard that? Well, really, uh, what we do know, Sean, is there there is another tranche of uh, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page text messages that actually have been v uh, vetted by the DOJ. And we uh, were just waiting on the inspector general to release those. He gave that release on Friday. We've been expecting those documents each and every day. As of tonight, as of right now, we don't have those. Uh, we have uh, let our displeasure be known to the DOJ officials. So hopefully we'll receive those tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, you know, why don't we get the whole batch? I don't understand the slow roll. 
Congressman Nunes, I, I got to give you a lot of credit. It always comes to a crisis. And then Rod Rosenstein, the last second, just for whatever reason, he'll, he'll finally hand it over after he begged Paul Ryan not to hand over what became the Nunes memo. Sir, you said what to Maria Baratiromo this weekend that there was no intelligence, none, as the basis for the start of this Russia probe? Yeah, let me, let me start by saying, uh, to, what, to Mark's point, they shouldn't wait. They need to enforce the subpoenas immediately, Mr. Gowdy and Mr. Goodlatt. Uh, the more that you wait over time, I've learned that you just wait and you wait and you wait, and pretty soon there'll be an election. And I think the Department of Justice and the FBI are banking on the Democrats taking over so that all these investigations can be shut down. As it relates to what I said uh, over the weekend, it remains true. We have not seen any Five Eyes intelligence, any credible intelligence that started uh, this investigation. It's why we're investigating the State Department it's unbelievable. Uh, for, a for a number of reasons. All right. Uh, let me ask you both. Is it going to take a contempt order from Con Are they going to be held in contempt at the Justice Department? Because I agree with your analysis. This seems they're trying to push this to 2018. See if Democrats get control. Well, I think, uh, Sean, one of the things Chairman Nunes has done an unbelievable job uh, not only investigating this, but keeping the pressure on. And it's not unless uh, that pressure is really felt by DOJ officials that they actually produce anything. And, and I've uh, been on the phone most of the day with them. I don't understand uh, why uh, it's taking such unbelievable Herculean efforts to get them to do that. But we've notified the, the White House as well. You know, it's, it's this president's DOJ, why, why are they not producing a, the documents and let us do our oversight? Congressman Nunes, your thoughts and, and what, what is it going to take? Well, I do think we're to the point where the Congress has to exercise its full authority. So immediate subpoenas, immediate contempt. If you have to move to impeachment, do that. Now, as Mark just said, as Mr. Meadows just said, I do believe that the president at this point should step in, should take his authority as the executive officer of this country and make sure that the United States Congress has provided all of this documentation immediately. Uh, and, and that's only because just look at all of the examples that are out there that go back a year and a half now that we were stalled on. And just tonight, you broke news again. If it is true that Mr. Richmond was an employee of the FBI, that's something we had no idea. We did not know that. Now, don't you think and we should have known that since we've been investigating this for a year and a half? I have, I have to run, and up to three people may have gotten this information. I want to thank you both because you're fighting for the truth, and I know you both have taken a lot of heat for it, and the American people deserve it. Thank you all for being with us. Congressman Meadows, Congressman Devin Nunes. When we come back, Tom Fitton, brand new tonight. Hillary Clinton emails, Sarah Carter, Greg Jarrett, later Michelle Malkins, Jessica Waters, and Jess Jesse Waters and Jessica Tarloff as Hannity continues. All right, joining us now with more reaction to tonight's opening monologue, Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Tom, let me start with you. We still are missing 33,000 emails, but... And this is a, a couple of hundred, but there was classified information. I know Judicial Watch works very hard. Freedom of Information Act. What did you find? Well, it's a new batch of emails from the emails that James Comey's FBI recovered the, from the emails that Hillary Clinton tried to delete or hide, those 33,000. So this is the batch that Hillary Clinton and her lawyers didn't want anyone to see. And they include 10 classified emails about Middle Eastern policy, communications with Anthony Blair, and top uh, officials at the State Department about Middle Eastern peace. And it's further indication and further demonstration of the massive violation of national security laws related to the mishandling of classified information that Hillary Clinton knowingly engaged in. You know, we're, fin we're spending all this time and money targeting Donald Trump on really nothing. And in the meantime, uh, Hillary Clinton has walked away scot-free despite time after time mm -hmm. of new information coming out showing that she engaged in criminal conduct. This Justice Department has Wait. got to decide whether they're going to let James Comey have the last word of whether Hillary Clinton did anything wrong or not. Greg Jarrett, I know you've been writing a book and your, off your office is two doors down from mine. I, I, I would like you to tell the title, but then I want you, we are back again. 18, U I feel like I'm going to get a law education right. from you. 18 USC 793, and now it's applicable to James Comey tonight. 
Yeah, it absolutely right. is. The name of the book is called The Russia Hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump. And it goes through all of this. One of the things that's very interesting here that we're learning about today is that Comey appears to have committed a felony by misleading Congress, a material omission, because Comey was asked uh, about leaking the material to Daniel Richmond. He didn't disclose that Richmond was an FBI employee. He didn't disclose that he also gave it to Patrick Fitzgerald. And by the way, the FBI has gone to both of those gentlemen's offices to do what's called a spillage cleanup to contain the wrongful leak by Comey. And the other thing in Comey's comments that you played tonight, um, he seems to be overlooking the fact that he stole government documents, 18 U.S.C. 641. The moment he took those presidential memos out of no. the FBI building and took them home, doesn't matter if it's in a safe, that's an unauthorized place, he was stealing government documents, which is a felony. All four of us have been way ahead of the curve. And I was joking tonight that, oh, it sounds like with a couple of questions Anderson Cooper asked James Comey, he might, he might have actually been watching the show and not telling anybody because they have been <laughs> on the wrong path for a long time over there. Um, but, you know, Sarah, we're waiting to struck page memos. I want to get your comments on that and also on this because Andrew McCabe is in trouble. Jim Comey is in trouble. Struck and Page are in trouble. The Clintons are in, Hillary Clinton is in trouble. I mean, this goes to the, and I do believe Clapper and Brennan, well, I want to find out what they knew when they knew it, and then they're leaking raw intelligence and surveillance, and I'm asking, this is, we're just at the tip of the iceberg, and it's now happening. Yeah, we are at the tip of the iceberg, Sean, because we know that the inspector general has another report coming out in May. Uh, that report will detail how the FBI handled, mishandled the Clinton investigation. And let's go to the Strzok and Page uh, text messages. Why is it that Congress has to make threats, you know, threats of contempt in order to get these documents? They have been looking at these documents for some time now. Uh, turn them over to Congress. Let the American people see what they have, what the Department of Justice has. I know I've repeatedly called the Department of Justice today. I've received no call back, no information whatsoever as to why they have not turned these over yet. I know the congressional members say they're expecting to get them tomorrow. There's also a lot of concern here with Comey. You know, Comey can try to backtrack and make these excuses, but he did take FBI property out of the FBI. And another issue that Comey is really going to have to deal with is like, if he believed that his discussions with the president uh, were uncomfortable, were obstruction, why didn't he tell Congress this well, when he spoke to them on May 3rd? Uh, why I all the runaround? Why the leaking? It's, it's again, we're back to lying by omission here. It was sort of like with the FISA court application. They never, they knew that they didn't verify it and they knew that they handed it over something that was more than just maybe politically tainted. It was an opposition party candidate. All right, I want to ask all of you the same question. We'll start with Tom. Who, based on where we are tonight, we know now Comey is lawyered up. Who else should be lawyered up tonight? Tom Finn. Well, Andrew McCabe, obviously, there's an ongo there's a referral pending now with the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia. Uh, that could come at any time. Uh, Mr. Uh, Comey, I would stop giving interviews if I were Mr. Comey at this point. Uh, the IG is investigating him, and we already know from the Justice yeah, Department go the, prosec the prosecutors are waiting. Comey mm -hmm. and McCabe face significant criminal liability right this Greg moment. Jarrett. It's Comey, and he knows he's in trouble because he hired the two people he leaked government documents to so that he could invoke the attorney-client privilege and clam up. It was a Machiavellian move. Uh, he makes J. Edgar Hoover look like a Boy Scout. <laughs> Well, uh, well, attorney else? client, Sarah? well, attorney, well, attorney client privilege doesn't seem to be the thing that people are respecting nowadays. Yeah, uh, apparently. Sean, yeah, yeah apparently, apparently not. Apparently. But, <laughs> but I think apparently. you know Lisa Page and uh, Peter Strzok as well, uh, and and others, uh, even Loretta Lynch. Uh, there's uh, Bruce Orr. There's going to be a lot of names in the upcoming reports, and a lot of people that I think will be lawyering up. All right. Amazing uh, work. We are going to this everything that we've been telling everyone for a year. Interesting. Now, even other networks are finally picking up on it. Not completely and not by a long stretch. But thank you all. Great work. Can't wait for that book, Greg Jarrett. All right. When we come back, Michelle Malkin fired up over Jim Acosta over at CNN and his comments insulting the American people. Also, Jesse Waters, Jessica Tarlev, incredible tweeting 
by Kanye West tonight embracing the president and much more. Stay with us. All right, so as we mentioned in our opening monologue, CNN's number one Trump hater, so-called journalist Jim Acosta, is getting a lot of backlash for saying this about people who like and listen to the president. The problem is, is that uh, people around the country don't know it's an act. They're not in on the act, and they take what he says very seriously, and they take attacks from Sean Spicer and Sarah Sanders and, and what they do to us on a daily basis very seriously. They don't have all their faculties in, in some cases. Their, their, their elevator might not hit all floors. My concern is, is that, there's a, that a journalist is going to be hurt one of these days. Somebody's going to get hurt. And uh, at that point, you know, the White House, the President of the United States, they're going to have to take a hard look in the mirror and ask themselves whether or not they played a role in this. Then Acosta took to Twitter today to say he's not talking about Trump supporters. Really? But given his past outlandish anti-Trump behavior, should we really believe him? Now, here are just a few of his lowlights. Take a look. What we're witnessing right now is just this erosion of our freedoms in terms of covering the president of the United States. That is just a, a strange and unpresidential thing to do, to be throwing rolls of paper towels at people. The last three news conferences, Wolf, all of the questions to the American news media have, have been handled by conservative press. And I, I think, Wolf, there's no other way to describe it, but the fix is in. The Statue of Liberty Jim, has always Jim, been let me ask you a question. of hope to the world Jim, for people to say Jim, do you believe people to this country. Jim, and they're not always going to speak Jim, English, Stephen. Jim, they're not do you always believe, going to be highly skilled. They're not always Jim, going to be Jim, 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 I, I appreciate your speech. I think we saw the president's true colors today, and, and I'm not sure they were red, white, and blue. The rest of the week. Is going to speak on Stormy Daniels? Why has he not spoken on Stormy Daniels, sir? Mr. President, should the DACA kids worry about what's going to happen to them? Mr. President, what about the DACA kids? Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You, just just Thank Caucasian you. or white countries, sir, or do you want people to come in from other parts of the world where there are people of color? All right, joining us now, CRTV host Michelle Malkin investigates. Michelle Malkin, by the way, we want to congratulate Michelle. One of her episodes was entered into the Manhattan Film Festival, another award. Congratulations. And, oh, full disclosure, Michelle is a friend. Um, and I, <laughs> I think we actually had a cookie at in the Fox green room one day together. Um, I'm right. sure we have. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Siri, Sean. Thank, thank you for being with us. Madonna talked about dreaming of blowing up the White House. We have severed heads of the president. We had an anthrax scare. The president talks about fake news. And Jim Acosta talks about Trump supporters not knowing it's an act, elevators not going to the top, not red, white, and blue and giving strong liberal opinions, but he says he's a journalist. Yeah, Acosta truly is the textbook definition of deplorable. And Dim Jim is somewhat of the sniveling little schnauzer of the White House press corps. He is somebody who's more interested in building his brand as the fourth estate's resistance leader than he is in actually reporting real news of which your show tonight and every night has been filled. And if if the CNN executives wonder why their ratings are in the basement, all they have to do is look at Jim Acosta's grandstanding and peacocking every single day. I think it's disgusting that he would smear Trump voters and Trump himself for their very legitimate and trenchant criticisms of the leftist media, the propagandists, you know, the collusion news network, and and then try to run and hide from his own comments. I wouldn't <laughs> care if he identified himself. He says, all right, I'm a liberal, but don't act like a reporter. You know, this blowing up the White House. I never heard President Trump say anything like that. Or, you know, it just it is severed heads or any of these other anthrax issues, scares for the family and the horrible things said about uh, Melania Ivanka, you know, and it's just been so over the top. I guess my question to you is, the media in this country has chosen a side. And yet, you know, they're wondering why people don't trust them anymore. You know, how can they possibly trust them? 
They can't, and it is the pretense of objectivity and neutrality that has been completely decimated by their own words. Let's talk uh, for a second here about the true climate of hate, the incitements of violence. And to add to your list, of course, look, the congressional baseball team is finally recon reconvening after a shooting that was committed by a Bernie Sanders volunteer. You know, where yeah. is all the panic of the likes of, of Jim Acosta and and all of his fellow lapdogs uh, in the White House press about where the true source of these incitements to violence come from. They will never look in the own mirror, me, and they certainly won't look on their own ideological side. You know, I love my team here on television. They work really, really hard. And 195 times in one day, 195 times, this is CNN. Take a look. What was your reaction when you heard the president called, you know, African nations? In, in one way, I'm proud. I am a proud holder. No. Donald Trump has turned the Oval Office into a whole, 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 whole country. Rich, do you have any example of any <laughs> whole country that the president referred to that is predominantly Caucasian? Holders, holes, holders. I work for holders. I'm proud to be a holder. I never in a million years thought I would be saying. <laughs> on television it's revealing it's like irredeemable deplorables or bitter people in pennsylvania clinging to their god their guns their bibles their religion it, it, there seems to be a contempt for all this red part of america michelle Oh, no, no question about it. And we joked, I joked with you last week that I call CNN PNN. They literally are in the toilet. <laughs> I have that um, montage <laughs> too. Yes. And, you know, just play those two montages every night when these fourth estate elitists preen uh, about their uh, incredibly amazing and important role in society. When all they do is dig holes and dig them deeper and double down when they are exposed. So proud of you. Congratulations. We really mean it as it relates to your n another potential award. Best of luck. We, uh, we love having you on. Thank you. When we come back, Jesse Waters, Jessica Tarlow, Kanye West, incredible Twitter tweet storm tonight, and his friendship with President Trump. Straight ahead. All right, so Kanye West, he's come out swinging this week, standing up for conservatives and President Trump. And today, Kanye even called out President Obama. He tweeted this, Obama was in office for eight years and nothing in Chicago changed. Now, despite the left demonizing Kanye, Chance the Rapper came out in support of his message, writing, quote, black people don't have to be Democrats. All right, here with Reaction co-host of The Five and the host, Waters oh, World. <laughs> we live in it. And Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlov. I really, well, there's a couple of things, Jessica. One is I love Kim Kardashian standing up for her husband, saying he's a free thinker. And he said, is that not allowed? I love that comment. And here's the other thing. All the years of Obama's president, there were nights, I know the high profile cases and, 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 and Missouri and the whole, and of course, Trayvon Martin, George right. Zimmerman and Baltimore, you know, they got so much attention. And, and I would scroll the names of all people we've never heard of yeah. shot in the streets of Chicago. And it should have been declared a national emergency and we fix it. And here's the point. Kanye is right. And why does it have to be, you know, why is somebody that likes the president, they get viciously attacked by your side? Oh, I'm not sure that's actually what's going on here. I don't think anyone is objecting to the fact that Kanye West has a right to have that opinion or Chance the Rapper has the right to say that all black people don't have to be Democrats. We, we know that well. We do know that people pick the parties that they align with because they are offering the best policies for that particular group. We also know have that the murder rate media? and the violent crime rate... Have you seen rate... social media tonight? Yeah, I've been all over Twitter. Things. What, oh, he horrible is... things. I mean, what... He is being He's attacked Kanye for West. that opinion, and I'm not so sure the Democratic policies are helping black people. I mean, he said it about Chicago right there under Obama. The shootings went up, homicides went up, poverty rates stayed the same, and wages were flat. So I don't know if that's good. I think what's happening is very clear. Kanye West has loosened the grip the Democratic Party holds on the black vote. And they can't afford to lose even 2%. That's how close this election is. When you have a, a cultural influencer like Kanye West, wear the MAGA hat, 
and say he loves You're Trump even laughing, and say he's this. one of his favorite people. I mean, that is a cultural tectonic shift, Jessica, that's happening. I think <laughs> your feet are moving underneath no, the not. floor because this is such a huge deal. And Kanye said it the best when he said this. To be great is to be misunderstood. Now, Kanye has that problem. I have that problem. Sean has that problem. <laughs> Donald Trump has the problem. I would argue you may I have, that, have problem that problem too sometimes. But I think what Kanye is trying to say, he's trying to deprogram people. Oh, Just yeah, because okay. you're black doesn't mean you have to vote Democrat. No, Jesse think... and Kanye. Okay. Hey, Sean, we're the enlightened people. You, me, and Kanye are on the side of love, and Jessica's on the side of mob. Oh, oh, and they're going to stay ouch. on the side of hate. No, you know, the love I mean, Trump's hate I mean thing. come on, you Listen, should if you respect Jessica, individuality. Jessica I do respect individuality. I think this is completely fine, but I don't think that you can go out there and say that this is a tectonic shift, and my feet, by the way, are not shaking because of what <laughs> happened right now with Kanye West. And it's very nice for Kim Kardashian to defend her husband. She also said that's not what she thinks. And then he also backtracked and said, oh, but I also love Hillary. I love everybody. And the only person I trust implicitly is myself because it wouldn't be Kanye if it wasn't Wait. actually completely self-absorbed. So and also, if you want to talk about go beyond Chicago, talk about what's going on with the national crime statistics in major cities. You've seen the murder rate and the violent crime rate go down. That is a trend that has been right. going on Let, let's since Let's stay the on Obama. topic. You know, that is this topic. Hillary Clinton was wrong then because she said the husbands make their wives vote for whoever they want. It's not true in the Kardashian West household. Looks but like it, Kim Kardashian's her own woman. And I respect her for that. I, I do as well. And that plaster thing Let me looks say good. one thing. It's always conservatives, though. It was me, Rush, and, and Mark Levin defending Bill Maher. And Bill, to his credit, defended Laura Ingram. Nobody ever defends me or Jesse Waters, though. Um, but I the defend point you is, guys. I hang what? out with you every week. I didn't hear what you said. What? I said I defend you. I hang out with you every week. Are we hanging out right now? I, I, you, you're getting close like to that. winning this week. Jesse, you better jump in. <laughs> oh, listen, wait. You, you know, know I've have... got a good one then if I'm on the precipice. Listen. I thought you guys didn't care about celebrity endorsements. You know that what? was something for the pathetic left. You know what? We don't like the celebrity hate. When some celebrity comes in with the love that Kanye West is coming in with, we respect that. Because you know why? We respect the individual we do not respect mob rule. And when you have dragon energy like the president and Kanye oh West God. has, <laughs> I, I think it may be confusing for some people. He's zigging, he's zagging. You have to unlearn your linear thinking, Jessica. Yes, I'm far too analytical. And open up your mind to yeah. so the possibilities out there. Right. Maybe by Listen, next week. I got, all right, the dragon energy comment. Sean, this it is through cheating. for Jesse. It's his world. <laughs> this Sorry, is what, Jessica. Like, like Vegas rules or whatever they say. See, he got that, he, quoting that was great. Thank you both. When we come back, an incredible video of the day, a foiled armed robbery. We've got it next. All right, time for our video of the day. A holdup gone wrong in Mexico. It was all caught on camera on Monday. As you see here, a young man tried to rob a market when he threatens a customer that has a cowboy hat on waiting in line. Then the would-be robber is then distracted, points his handgun at a woman who had been at the back of the store. Well, that's when the guy with the hat leaps into action. And you can see wrestling away the suspect's pistol. Now the fight moves off camera and it looks like the suspect is about to get away when a store employee catches him moments before escaping. According to local reports, the suspect was in fact taken into police custody. Um, I love heroes. I love people that stand up and risk their lives. Remember those guys in the ball field when Steve Scalise was shot, that shooting? Remember those officers walked in? They were, had pistols. All right, we'll always be fair and balanced. We're not to destroy Trump media. Let not your heart be troubled.